and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in October 24. This month was quite interesting, there was clearly a gap in releases where not many games came out for about two weeks, luckily because people didn't want to launch during the October Steam Fest, it looked like maybe this month it would be easy to pick just 10, but in the remaining weeks it was still full of excellent games, so yep, once again, very tough to pick just 10, and with this being October there were lots of horror games, that's really not my kind of genre so I didn't pick any of those, but if you like horror games then there's a ton of awesome stuff that came out. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game, that is my personal pick of the month. And if you need realistic assets, there's an excellent bundle 99% off, it features a bunch of really gorgeous looking environments, you can make a lot of gorgeous realistic games with these assets. It's a huge discount, so almost 4 grand worth for just 30 bucks. Or alternatively for more 2D and satellite stuff, this one contains a bunch of retro textures, you've got all kinds of sprites, characters, you've got sound effects, you've also got a bunch of UI, a bunch of visual effects, and tons more. Check out both bundles with the links in the description. And I'm currently rendering my free 7 hour DOTS course video, this will be coming out this Friday, so definitely stay tuned for that. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with the latest game from the makers of Dead Cells, it's Windblown, you've got a similar super fast paced roguelike, but this time in all three dimensions, dash your way in this super fast, super flashy action game, fight some amazing creatures with some very unique attack patterns, unlock and equip weapons to create unique synergies, this is really a roguelike through and through, meaning death is not the end, it's just not a chance to learn, learn the attack patterns, get better equipment, and try again. You can play either solo or in 3 player co-op. The game is out now in early access, and it appears that the devs took their excellent knowledge of making Dead Cells and applied it to this game. In just one week, it already has over 2000 reviews at 89% positive. So if you want some super fast paced action, then definitely give this one a try. Next, if you like lying to your friends, then check out Liar's Bar. This game is all about bluffing. You can play in Liar's Dice or Liar's Deck. You get a bunch of cards or dice, then you tell others what you got, either be truthful or bluff. Others can either believe you or they can call your bluff. If you got called on a bluff, then you play Russian Roulette and either you survive to play another round or that's it. You can play with cards or dice and the final version will eventually also have Liar's Poker and Liar's Roulette. Essentially this is a very very simple game but very well made. Visually it looks really gorgeous, both in terms of the quality of the visuals and also in terms of uniqueness. The characters are all quite a bit strange, I definitely don't think this game would have done this well if these were just normal boring humans. And of course, with this being a multiplayer social deduction game, because that naturally it's perfect for streamers. So there are tons of videos with millions of views, which in turn of course leads to this game having over 10,000 very positive reviews, meaning it likely sold hundreds of thousands of copies already. It is definitely an interesting example of how some games can just go viral. Then if you want something super stylish, here is Shady Knight. It is a very fast paced first person melee action game. This one is all about satisfying action. You can throw a grappling hook and then slice an enemy in midair, whilst also so throwing a knife onto another enemy, throw those enemies into the air and pull them down with your hook, then grab a bow and fire multiple auto-aim arrows. The game does look super stylish, super fun to play, it describes itself as a pure skill based experience. There are no locked abilities, it's really just all up to you and your own personal skills. The game mixes parkour and action in a really nice way, doing a sword slash while coming out of a slide will be a different action than doing a sword slash while in midair. You can find all the combinations and mix them in satisfying ways, naturally there's a style counter, so make your run super stylish to get that coveted triple S ranking. Reviews are all extremely positive, there's 400 reviews at 95% positive, so if you like some stylish action then definitely give this one a try. Next for something with a gorgeous realistic art style, here we have The Last Plague Blight. It is a crafting survival game. The main selling point is how it's rooted in realism. There are no special fantasy enemies, no zombies or anything like that. The main antagonists are really just some very hungry, very deadly wolves. You gather resources and craft a house to live in, just like in many other survival games. The world is randomly generated. A disease known as Blight has wiped out most people. Your goal is to survive long enough to find a cure. The unique thing is really the realism, so water needs to be boiled, raw materials need to be prepared, hunger, hydration and energy, those are all super important, danger can come from anywhere at any time, there's really no safe zone, and the game can be played either solo or in co-op. This looks like a very interesting game and the focus on realism seems quite nice, it seems people are enjoying it, there's over 400 views at 92% positive. Next if you like the color red, then here is Kill Knight. 
It is an ultra responsive, arcade inspired, isometric action shooter. There's a lot of action, a lot of blood, a lot of enemies and a lot of skills. If you like non-stop mayhem then this looks excellent. The game is really all about push forward combat. It rewards non-stop aggression and precision. It encourages you to just go 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 and never stop. You descend through 5 layers, each more deadly than the last. Complete various challenges to improve your arsenal and unlock different playstyles. You can play by yourself with various difficulties or take it seriously and try to reach the top of the leaderboard. The game really has an excellent intense gameplay. Everything from the visuals to the sound design and the mechanics, all of it really reinforces this extreme push forward combat. The game is out right now with 800 reviews at 94% positive. That is really good so people definitely are enjoying the super fast gory action. Next for a modern old school adventure, here is Sulphur. That's really how the game describes itself, modern old school. The goal is quite simple, dive into the depths, fight off enemies with some satisfying guns, get some loot and stay alive. If you die, then just pick up a new loadout and try again. Based on trailer, the guns feel quite awesome to play with. The shooting feels nice, the animations, all of it looks really great. You can pick up a bunch of weapons and customize them with scopes and all kinds of attachments. It also features a pretty complex equipment system, one with lots of objects that can be equipped in multiple slots and can also be enchanted to give you special bonuses. If you die, you drop all your loot, so the game has a nice risk reward mechanic. The game is currently in early access and has a pretty robust roadmap. They will be adding new biomes, weapons, magic, and a bunch more. One interesting thing is how they have a multiplayer as a stretch goal on that roadmap. I don't think I've ever seen a stretch goal in an early access game. I do wonder, does this strategy actually help or does it just annoy people? I don't know how receptive people are to stretch goals in early access games, but regardless, people are are really enjoying the current state. In just a few days, it already has 700 very positive reviews. Then for some platformer action, here is Dun Jungle. It's a 2D action roguelike where you play as a monkey hero protecting the jungle from all sorts of enemies and weird creatures. The monkey character and the jungle environments make it quite unique compared to a bunch of other platformers. It features lots of normal enemies and huge boss fights with unique patterns. You can equip spells and relics, each with unique effects to make your own custom build. Dungeons are all procedurally generated, so every run is different. And beyond enemies, you will also find some friendly monkeys hanging around the jungle. All of them ready to help you on your quest. It's a roguelike so it has a fast game loop, there are no checkpoints, you die and you start over while keeping some bonuses from your previous run. Platformers are really a tricky genre, so the fact that this game is finding quite a nice amount of success does mean that it's great. In one week it already has 250 reviews at 97% positive, that's almost a perfect score, so if you like a platformer roguelike then definitely give this one a try. Next, if you want an interesting colony builder, here is Worshippers of Cthulhu. You are the leader of a cult of Cthulhu. Build a colony for all your cultists, gather some food and build some housing, give them jobs to do things like harvest corn or cut down some wood, and of course have them pray. Have them perform dark rituals and do some sacrifices to the elder gods, unlock the book of symbols and carve them on your cultists' bodies. Really very strange stuff. I wonder what this mechanic does. You can conquer and pillage and sacrifice or just convert the non-believers. If you enjoy Lovecraftian horror, then it looks like they are being quite respectful of the source material. This is definitely an interesting, unique concept for a city builder, colony builder type of game. It is out now in early access and people do seem to be enjoying it, currently sitting at 400 very positive reviews. Then if you like crafting guns, here is Nimrod's Guncraft Survivor. It is a vampire survivor's like with tons of guns, so there's a ton of enemies constantly chasing you as you explore or this world. If you die, go back to your base, get some upgrades and try again. Of course the game is really all about the guns. Customize your weapon with tons of attachments that completely change how it works. You can have a gun that fires simple small bullets or you can build a flamethrower. You can get a drone to help you or fire tons of bullets in interesting patterns. The game very much encourages you to basically break it with insane combinations. And the gun builds that you make, they aren't just temporary for a single run. You can equip them in your drone to assist you on your next run. Adding such complex gun customization to the familiar Vampire Survivors formula, that sounds like a really great idea, and most players do seem to agree. It currently has 250 very positive reviews, so if you're looking for a new Vampire Survivors like, then this one looks nice. And finally at number one for my personal pick of the month, here is Gunsmith Simulator. Every month we have a bunch of similar games, this one just hit 1.0. Like name implies, you are a gunsmith and here you can repair, restore and personalize guns. The weapons are all extremely well detailed, you've got some very high quality models showing all of the individual parts that make 
make it work. You basically get some orders to fix or modify some gun, take it apart into some pieces, then replace something that is broken or paint some parts, put it all back together, fulfill the job and get some money to buy your own guns. Then you can also just drive to the gun range and use them yourself. You can see how the gun performs, then maybe go back, change some optics, add a foregrip and try again. Keep making orders for all your clients to make some money and keep building your own personal collection. There are 20 super highly detailed guns for you to play with and customize, everything from an old school Winchester to a modern M4. The game just hit 1.0 after spending one year in early access. It's got over 2000 very positive reviews, definitely one of the bigger simulator games. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about all the pieces that make a gun work, then maybe check this out. All right, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launched on October 24. I hope this list helps you see how DNT engine is capable of building anything. The limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing it.